rode over his solid gold evening gown and we hurried out to my car. I turned the key in the ignition, stepped on the starter, and felt a surge of smooth power as the motor caught and we glided quietly into the fog. In a few minutes, we pulled up in front of the old warehouse. It was deathly quiet, sweethearts. Nothing seemed to move, sweethearts, but it was very still and ominous, sweethearts. This was it. It was now or never. If the crooks came back tonight and I caught them, the case would be solved forever. The case would be cracked, dear. Yeah. Yeah, cracked. Yeah. I completely agree with the cracked idea. <laughs> well, here's the way I figured it. If I didn't catch the crooks, I only had two things to worry about. Either they'd never come back or they'd try again next month. If they didn't come back, I had nothing to worry about. If they did come back, I'd try to catch them. If I caught them, the case would be cracked. If I didn't catch them, I only had two things to worry about. Either they'd never come back or they'd come back next month. Or... Well, just let me know when you get to October. My vacation comes up then. <laughs> we approached the door of said warehouse office. It's just midnight. Time for me to report on the job. If the thieves were going to strike, it'd be soon. Then I saw him. Every muscle in my body froze. The back of my neck crept up toward the top of my head. Oh, Andy, dear. Didn't I push your hair down over your eyes? <laughs> Uh, Andrew, take a short cut. Yeah. Who was the man? Oh, oh, the man. The yeah. other night watchman, he was just going home. <laughs> he had a close call. I almost shot him myself. <laughs> then Polly and I headed for the warehouse office. Andy, Andy, don't cross the sidewalk. Uh, I have a feeling something horrible, something unnatural is waiting there in the dark. Sweetheart, we can't turn back now. It's it. For us. Oh, Andy, please. Please don't go that way. <laughs> I laughed at the foolish child. I thought you were simply hysterical. Then, then it, then it happened. I must have fallen two miles down that manhole. My whole life passed before my eyes. You know, it would make a wonderful Technicolor picture, too. Finally... I hit bottom with a thud. And then I... I was being lifted on a peppermint stick. Giant candid cameras flew fast, popping their flash bulbs and clicking their shutters. Up and up I went into a raspberry gelatin sky, and then I saw it. I saw it. My little pink cotton cloud number six and seven eights. And that horrible grinning little man was there laughing. <laughs> I loathed him, that monster. That monster! My alter ego! Walter, who do you? <laughs> no, alter ego, Emily. That's his other self. Yes. Uh, I don't understand this part of it. Andy, dear, come back to me, little pink cloud, and climb up out of that manhole. Yeah, my head was splitting. A million stars were exploding all around me, and that fiendish little gnome kept laughing. <laughs> Oh, James, isn't that funny? <laughs> Suddenly, I crashed back to Earth. Oh, Andy. Andy, dear, don't come down so fast. You'll get the bends. Climbed up, said Manhole, and the whole solution of the mystery came to me in just a flash. That's fine, that's fine. Now, may we have it in a flash also? Period. End of report, period, dash, semicolon, period, stop, end of report. End of report? <laughs> you haven't solved anything yet. Certainly I did. I washed the case up in two minutes. But how, dear? But how? <laughs> Easy, I just walked up to the boss this morning and quit. <laughs> Now, 
now, here again is the Hardy family. Mom, Dad, what would you say if I told you I was going into a sensational new business? Well, Andrew, I wouldn't say a word. I'd be speechless. Yes, I... oh, But, Andy, you've got another job already. Yeah, I ran into a guy who's planning to open a new office in Carville. He gave me his phone number and told me to call him this evening. Well, what little venture are you interested in this time? Swiss Alp climbing? <laughs> No, no, not Swiss Alp climbing, Dad. This job is just uh, tailor-made for me. Well, as I recall it, you were just perfect for that night watchman's job, too. Mm. That wasn't right for me, I know. I'm no good at guarding things. I'm better at losing things. Yes. That's right, dear. James, you remember just last week he lost his watch and his wallet? Mm, that's right. So I'm going into the losing business. The losing business? Yeah, I'm going to sell floater policies for an insurance company. You know, we pay off if you... If you happen to lose something? Well, that sounds wonderful for you, dear. Well, it does sound like work more suited to your talents. I think you ought to call the man right away. I would, except for one thing. Uh, what's that? I lost his phone number. on characters created by Aurania Rubrol. This program was written by Jameson Brewer. Direction is by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Jerry Fielding. Supporting cast included Eleanor Cannon, Dick Crenna, Peter Leeds, and Jerry Hausner. Herb Allen speaking. (laughs) 